The following is a class on the Bhagavad Gita as it is. Fourth chapter, text 19 through 22. Given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Recorded in July of 1966 in New York. Yastra Sarbhi Samarambhya Kama Sankalpa Buddhita Gyanagni Dagdha Karmana Tamahu Panditan Buddha Sakya Karma Phala Sangam Nitta Sripta Nirasra Karmani Abhi Prabhitopi Naiva Kinchi Taroti Sha Now <coughs> how one can work without any lust. This process is being described by Sri Krishna to Arjun. <coughs> In our last meeting we have discussed the previous verse that we have to we may begin any gorgeous task, it doesn't matter, but we have to work in Krishna consciousness, not for sense gratification. That will make us uh, free from the interaction of the activity. So long we are attached to work for sense gratification. So long we shall be under the obligation of reaction. Now, if we want to get out of the reaction of material activity, then this is the formula given by Sri Krishna, Kama Sankalpa Bhajita. Kama means one sense gratification. I want to do this thing for my sense gratification. That is materialism. But if I want to do something which will be satisfactory, which will be satisfaction to Krishna, that is Krishna consciousness. This very simple thing we are discussing in a different way. And this Krishna consciousness is attained by Jnanagni Dabdha Parmana. Yes. Look from this angle, it's the same as broken. No, no, no. Just the end of the one. Just like if a fire burns everything, similarly, when we act in Krishna consciousness, after, after attainment of full knowledge of Krishna consciousness, then just like fire burns everything, similarly the reaction of our activities will be burned. Jnanagni dabdha karmana. This verse we have already discussed. And the next verse is further explanation of this verse. Tattva karma phala sangam nitta sripta nirasya. Now, whatever we do, we deserve some fruit out of it. Anything we do, we expect some result out of it. Sometimes the result may be bad or sometimes the result may be very good. But a person in Krishna consciousness should not be attached either to the good result or bad result. Uh, because even if I want good result, that is my attachment. 
And of course, if there is bad result, we haven't got any attachment, but sometimes we lament. That is our attachment. That is our attachment. So one has to transcend both from the good result and the bad result. How it can be done? It can be done just like if you are working on account of some big farm. Suppose you are a salesman. You are working on behalf of that big farm. Now suppose if you make one million dollars profit, you have no attachment for that because you know that this profit goes to the proprietor. You have no attachment. Similarly, if there is some loss, you also know that I have nothing to do with the loss. And it goes to the proprietor. Similarly, if we work on account of Krishna, then I shall be able to give up the attachment for the result of the war. Tatta karma phala sangam nitta tripta nirasraya. Nitta tripta. All is satisfied. Either there is good result or there is bad result. It doesn't matter. I shall remain satisfied in the sense that I am working under the direction of Krishna. So I have nothing to uh, think of the reason. Tanmanne vādhikārasti māphale svadāsya. Just like Arjuna. Arjuna did not like to fight with his relatives, with his grandfather. But because Krishna wanted it, he uh, fought and he was satisfied. Because the principle was that Krishna wants it and Krishna is satisfied. Although I, I, I do not like to fight, but Krishna is satisfied, therefore I have to fight. This is Krishna concept. Nitta tripta. He is not dissatisfied. Though, oh, I have to fight against my relatives, my grandfather, my teacher. Nirasa. Nirasa means he is not under the obligation of any good result or bad result. Nirasa. In this way, if we engage ourselves in any activity, karmani avipravistopi, if one is engaged in such a spirit of neutrality simply for the satisfaction of Krishna, then the result will be karmani avipravistopi, although he is engaged in every sort of work, naiva kinchi karoti sa, he is free from that work. He is free from the result a reaction of such work. So this is the process that we, we have simply to act in Krishna consciousness and, and by doing so, the reaction of such work will not affect me. Nirasi jatacitta tapta sarva parigraha Sariram kevalam karma kurban nāpnati kilmisham. Kilmisham. Kilmisham means seen. Ah. We are materially uh, so much entangled that uh, even if we do not want to commit any sin, uh, consciously or unconsciously, we are obliged to commit some sort of sin. We are in such a circumstances. Say, for example, just like animal killing. Animal killing, according to uh, uh, Buddhist philosophy, or even according to uh, Hindu philosophy, animal killing is a sort of sin. Now, suppose I 
I am not inclined to kill animals, or I do not kill animals. I avoid it. But intentionally or inten unintentionally, sometimes we have to kill animals. How is that? Now suppose we are walking on the street. There are many ants who are being killed by the pressure of our, of our legs, unintentionally. Now, and suppose, of course, here we have got gas oven. But in India, they have got ordinary country oven, and uh, that is washed daily. And sometimes in the oven, some small germs and flies they take shelter. But when you go fire the oven, they die. So that is intention. Ah. Sometimes you keep. The jug of a jug of water, and within the uh, underneath the jug of water, there are many, uh, I mean, say small germs and flies that take shelter. But when you take the jug, they are killed. In this way, there are so many processes, unintentionally or intentionally, we have to kill. Uh, but they are taken into account. They are also seen according to strict Vedic literature. Uh, if you kill even a bug, oh, you are sinful. Oh, you cannot kill even a bug. These are mentioned in the scripture. Now, how we can avoid? How we can avoid? That is it. I do not like to kill, but sometimes unintentionally they are killed. Therefore, according to Vedic literature, there are five kinds of yoga performed to get oneself free from this unintentional killing of animals. Now here Krishna says, the sāriraṁ kevalaṁ karma kurvaṁ nāpi kurvaṁ nāpnoti kilmiṣaṁ. If you make your principle of life that I have to work simply for maintaining and my body and soul together. Sāriraṁ. Sāriraṁ means body. Because I have to execute, I have to understand Krishna consciousness. But without this body, how can I uh, understand or culture Krishna consciousness? So my body must be maintained. And if I want to maintain my body, Intentionally or unintentionally, I have to commit so many things. Uh, let's take for example, uh, those who are vegetarians, they may think that we are not killing animals. No, they are also committing sins. Because vegetables, they have also got life. Uh, so, the nature's law is that to keep up your body, you have to kill another body. Never mind it is vegetable or, I mean to say, animal or some fish or something else. Okay. Jiva jivasa jivanam, one living entity is the, I mean, subsistence, uh, life giving subsistence for another living being. That is the nature's law. You will find. Uh, Ahastani sahastana. The everything has been very nicely discussed in Vedic literature. Uh, they have discussed all the points. Ahastani sahastana. Those who have got hands, they are eating, and it's living entities who have no hands. That means we are human beings. We have got hands. And we are, we are eating animals. They have got only legs. They have no hands. So, ahastanam sahastanam ahastani. Those who have got hands, they are eating the animals which have no hands. And apadani chatuspadam. Those who have no legs, they are being eaten by the four legged. Just like the cow eating grass. Ah. So grass cannot move, it has life, but it cannot move. So, and 
अपदानाम सपदानी नून अंग महोदा तत्रा नून अंग दो वीक दे आर बींग इटन बाय जस्ट लाइक वील फाइन लीजर्ड इन योर कंट्री डोंट फाइन लीजर इन इंडिया वी हैव गॉट मेनी लीजर्स इन द वर्ल्ड दे आर इटिंग स्मॉल एंड नून अंग महोदा तत्रा and in the uh, snake snake kingdom it find small snakes are being by the big snake ha oh. similarly in and uh, in sea water also it find small fishes are being eaten by the big fishes ha oh. and the same law is applicable in human society a big nation is trying to swallow up a small nation you see This is going on. This is nature's law. Ah. Nature's law. You cannot avoid it. But <clears throat> there are those who are Krishna conscious. They, they. It is. It is said that Sariram Kevalam Karma Kurban Naapnoti Naakilisha. Those who are in Krishna conscious, they, they are not entangled in these sinful acts. How? they are also maintaining their body so when they are maintaining their body they have to commit sins they have to eat other animals or vegetables never mind so how they are not committing sins uh, these are very intelligent questions uh, that there is krishna consciousness a devotee of lord krishna he does not eat anything which is not offered to krishna Just like you take the remnants of your master, and uh, just a servant takes the remnants of your master. The master is in India. The prophecy: the husband and wife, and uh, the after uh, the husband eats, the remnants are taken by the wife. Uh, the wife does not eat along with the husband. Uh, that is the old system. Now it is being changed. The husband and wife, they do not. The husband is supplied by the wife all kinds of good dishes, and when the husband is satisfied, uh, some food stuff is left, and that is taken by the wife. So similarly, uh, uh, a devotee of Krishna, he does not take anything, does not accept anything which is not offered to Krishna. This is the process. Because his life is full of Krishna consciousness, and, and Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, he is fine. Uh, suppose if you want to take things which has been eaten by Krishna, then you have to ask Krishna, what do you desire to eat, sir? Suppose if you want me to feed, give me some food stuff, naturally you ask me. Tell me the what sort of food stuff you like. I I I have got experience here in your country. I was invited in Batla here also uh, some by some churches, and they wanted to give me some food. So they asked me, Tell me the what you desire to eat. So I told them I eat. I am strictly vegetarian. I shall accept uh, fruits, veggie, fruits and meat. That's all. Similarly, if anyone invites somebody, it is natural that that the guest is asked what sort of food stuff he would like. Similarly, Krishna, if you want to offer something, Krishna, you must know what sort of food stuff he wants. How will know? Krishna is not just in present in your front. How will know that Krishna wants this food stuff? Oh, that is stated in the Bhagavad Gita. Just like you can understand what government expects from me, you can know from the law books, from the civil courts. Uh, similarly, what Krishna wants, uh, it is stated in the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna says, "Patram pusvam phalam toyam jyomi bhakta prajyati." तदहम भक्तियापुरीतमश्नामी प्रजतात्मन ना कृष्णा द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड ही इज नॉट हंग्री ही इज नॉट हंग्री 
that I shall supply him food stuff, and therefore uh, he will be uh, maintained. It is not like that, but still Krishna says that patram kusmam phalam toyam jomi bhaktavrishyati any devotee, if he offers me patram, patram means leaf, kusmam uh, means flower, patram kusmam phalam, phalam means fruit, patram kusmam phalam toyam, toyam means milk or water. Generally it is means meant water. Now the see, to satisfy Krishna is not very difficult thing. Ah. Even the poorest man in the world, he can satisfy Krishna by these four items. Anyone can secure from any part of the world. Ah. It doesn't matter that because Krishna was, ah, I mean to say, Krishna appeared, in India, therefore he wanted Indian food. No. The patram kusvam phalam toya, eh, leaf and flower and fruit and water, oh, that is available in America, that is available in Jacobslavitia and Greenland, everywhere. Eh. So this is the universal form of satisfying Krishna. Anyone, it doesn't matter, however poor he is, he can satisfy oh. You do not require, oh, Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, I have invited him. So I must arrange very nice food stuff. Of course, if you have got means to supply very nice food stuff, you must. Huh? Otherwise, you will be understood that you are miser. If for your own uh, eating, you prepare very nice dishes. And because Krishna says, I will be satisfied with leaf and, and uh, fruit, so you supply Krishna all like, sir, you take leaf and fruit, and for me ask, I shall take this palatable dishes. No, Krishna is very, I mean, say, hmm. intelligent also. He is more intelligent than, so then you are cheating. It is for me and the poorest man. If you have got means, ah, in India there are many thousands of Krishna temples all over India, especially in Vrindavan. I have several times uh, told you that Vrindavan is a city only uh, uh, 50, 50,000 people, uh, not even 100,000, 50,000 people is a small city. But there are five thousand temples, five thousand, all Krishna temples. Ah. Now each, each and in every temple you will find how nice foods are according to the capacity of the temple owner. Ah. Oh. Very, I mean, say, costly foodstuffs are being offered and those foodstuffs is distributed among the four classes. Now, and at the present moment, after the, uh, uh, we have got Saras or independence, the government has uh, interfered with this sort of service. Uh, they say that this is a uh, waste of uh, money. Why you are offering? They are becoming atheists. But this is not waste of money. Uh, at the cost of the rich man, the prasadam was being distributed to the poor class of man at a nominal cost. Okay. Now, poor man, they go to hotel, but if they take prasadam at, in a temple, oh, the far better quality food stuff is supplied to him only at nominal cost. Yeah. In the hotel, what will be charged? One dollar. He can have it in the temple for ten cents. Yeah. So this is the one thing. In our childhood, when I was uh, a boy of eight or ten years, sometimes I used to accompany my father. My father was a great devotee. He would take prasadam from the temple. So I got experience uh, that we paid at, for two dishes, four annas. Four annas means, according to uh, modern exchange, it is five centuries. 
five cents according to your exchange value. Now for five cents we are very nice prasadam. Ah, we can get uh, two persons to your faith. Still there is a place which is called Nathadvara. Nathadvara, uh, if you pay there two and a half, you will get what prasadam, uh, two dollars worth. So this system is going on still. So if one has got sufficient means, he should supply Krishna to his best capacity. But when Krishna wants that uh, you give me, uh, he says, this is the lowest common factor, patram puṣṇam phalam tuya. Anyone, any poor man in any part of the country, they can uh, supply Krishna and take the prasadam. So now by, by taking that prasadam, you become free from the and it is a responsibility of being seen through. That is the point. That we will find in Bhagavad Gita that Jagya Sista Sino Santa Muchante Sarvakilmishai. If you take the remnants after offering Krishna, that food stuff makes you free from all kinds of sin. So, anyone. And it doesn't matter what he is. He can prepare food stuff, either family-wise or just like I am here single, uh, I am uh, cooking my food stuff and <coughs> I am offering my food stuff and I am taking and as far as possible uh, some of the remnants is distributed to the devotees. Uh, so this process we can adopt everyone because we have to maintain this body. Uh, so if we do not take Krishna prasad, then I become responsible for all kinds of things. But if we take, accept Krishna prasad, then I have no responsibility. Because Krishna is taking, just like Arjuna is fighting, Arjuna is afraid of sinful acts by killing his kinsmen and uh, I mean, the grandfather. But when you understood that I am fighting on Krishna's account, so I am free. Say, Sariram Kevalam Karma Kurvan, Kurvan, na apnoti kilmisam. If you simply uh, don't try to uh, increase your artificial demands for maintaining this body, you have every right to live. And you have, everyone has got right to live. Not only myself, even the ant has got the right to live. Uh, but in a, in, a, in a human society, by our so-called civilization, we give all protection to the human uh, society, but we don't give any protection to the animal society, because it is due to want of Krishna consciousness. When we shall be Krishna conscious, then naturally we shall feel for every living entity, because we shall know uh, because in the Bhagavad Gita it is stated, Mamai Vamsa Jiva Loke Jiva Bhuta Sanatana. All these living entities, they are all my fragments. They are parts and parcels of Krishna. Under circumstances, some of them have become lower animals, some of them have become big men, some of them become has demigods, some of them become small germs. It doesn't matter. But they are all parts and parts of Krishna. So a person who is under Krishna consciousness, he cannot make any injustice to any living entity. That is Krishna consciousness. Therefore, one who has dedicated his life for acting uh, on account of Krishna, under Krishna consciousness, Nirasi Jatachitatma. He has no other hope except, save and extend to satisfy Krishna. Nirasi Jatachitatma Tapta Sarva Parigraha. He doesn't like to make, uh, exploit the resources of the material nature. Uh, whatever 
is obtained and easily as gift of nature he accepts and he maintains his body and soul together and for Krishna satisfaction and he eats everything which is offered to Krishna, then he is free from all kinds of uh, sinful reaction. By the next log it is more nicely explained. Yadichya lavasantusya dandatita vimatsaraha sama siddhyava siddhaucha kirtyapi na nivandhate. Now the process of life is described here. Yadricha lava santushta. One should be satisfied uh, uh, with things which comes very easily. We should not try for anything uh, too much to obtain it. No. We shall be satisfied whatever comes automatically or by the will of Krishna. We may be satisfied in that. Yadrichala. For gaining something, we should not be too much endeavor. Then I shall be deviated from Krishna concept. There are six formulas which can deviate us from Krishna consciousness. And there are six formulas which, which can encourage us, which can enhance, advance us in Krishna consciousness. And what are they? Now, first of all, let me say, what are against principles, uh, against Krishna consciousness, against the principle of Krishna consciousness? What are they? Atyahara prayasascha prajalpa niyamagraha lola janasanunascha saravi bhakti pranascha saravi bhakti pranascha Pranasati means is lost. Krishna consciousness is lost. How? By these six processes. What are these six processes? Atyahara. Atyahara means to eat more than what you require. And Atyahara means to accumulate wealth more than what you require. The whole trouble of the world is that nobody is satisfied. Uh, if he is a poor man, if he thinks, oh, I am, my income is hundred dollars, if I get four hundred dollars per month, then I will be very happy. But when he gets four hundred dollars, he expects, oh, if I get one thousand dollars, then I shall be happy. In this way it is going on. Nobody is satisfied. But here it is said, yadi chala uh, that automatically comes. As we make progress in the matter of Krishna consciousness, then our demand for more enjoyment, for more, more uh, accumulation of wealth, diminishes. Uh, that is the that is a, uh, symptom of Krishna consciousness. Uh, uh, so, Uttyahara means to acquire more. Then we need. Ah. We, we, because we have to maintain this body and soul together, then we must earn something or acquire something to keep my health and body fit. That is all right. But we should not try unnecessarily for accumulating more. Ah. Suppose if I am satisfied by some grains and vegetables and fruits and milk, if my health is properly kept, why should I eat more than that? Ah, simply for satisfying the palace, my tongue. Oh, no, we should not do that. So, that is chala ah, So, utyaha, utyara, to accept more than what we need, oh, that is against Krishna consciousness. And prayasa, prayasa means we have to acquire something, but if it requires a heavy work, Heavy, I mean, say, endeavor, we should avoid it. We should avoid it. Uttyāra prayāsasya prajalpa. Prajalpa means for nothing talking nonsense. People are uh, accustomed to talk so many things unnecessarily. Uh, just in class, among friends' circle, 
uh, which has no benefit either spiritually or materially. So that thought of doctrine should be avoided. Atyahara prayasasya prajalpa niyamagraha. Niyamagraha means to stick to the rules, regulation. And suppose in your faith or in my faith there are certain rules and regulations to be observed. But if I go to some other place where the rules and regulations cannot be strictly observed, and if I want to observe such rules and regulations, then my main business is suffering. So we should not stick to the rules and regulations, we should stick to the business. Just like I'm an Indian sannyasi, I've come to a country, uh, to your country. Oh, there are many rules and regulations in India which is different from your rules and regulations. But if I follow, if I stick to rules and regulations of India and conception, then it is impossible uh, to remain here. So I have to and propagate this mission, Krishna consciousness. So I am not so much and I am attached to the rules and regulations, but I am attached to the preaching work. So therefore, niyamagra, uttyāra prayāsaṣṭa prajalpa niyamagra. This folk, this niyamagra is also against Krishna consciousness. And niyamagra also. And when you are in quite a convenient position, if you do not observe the rules and regulations, that is also against Krishna consciousness. Atyāra prayāsaṣṭa prajalpa niyamāgraha lolam, lolam means greediness. That is against Krishna consciousness. Janasangastra. Janasangastra means to associate with persons who are not interested in Krishna consciousness. We should have heard. We should have heard association of persons who are not interested in Krishna consciousness. If we met uh, more association with persons who are not interested in Krishna consciousness, then it will go against me. So these are six against rules. Similarly, there are six favorable rules. Ah, what are they? Uttahat, Dajyat, Nishtayat, Tattat, Tatma, Parvartanat, Sato, Vipte, Sadhu, Sangye, Saravi, Bhakti, Prasiddhati. Prasiddhati means it flourishes. The cause is advanced. How? Uttaha. We should be very much enthusiastic. Oh, Krishna consciousness is so nice. We have heard about Krishna consciousness. So nice things. It is so beneficial for successful human mission. So I must have it. I must execute this Krishna consciousness. This is Kalusa. To become energy. Uh, not lethargetic, but energetic. So uta dhrijyat, dhrijyat means with patience. Suppose I have begun uh, immediately, so if there are so many impediments, I am not immediately successful. Oh, that doesn't matter. I must be patient. Uta dhrijyat, nishchat. Nishchat means uh, with confidence. Confidence. Because Krishna says, this is this. So I must have confidence. So Krishna says like this, so it is sure to be successful. I must have that confidence. Tutta, dhajya, nishya, and tattat karma pravartana. And you have to do, you have to act accordingly, as Krishna says. If you do not act, then the tattat karma pravartana, satu vritti, and your profession should be very honest. Sato vitte and sadhu sange, and you should associate. Just like the against rule is to associate with persons who are not Krishna conscious. Similarly, sadhu sange. Sadhu sange means, sadhu means who are culturing the Krishna conscious. They are called sadhu. You'll find in the Bhagavad Gita. Abhite sudura chara bhajati mamananda bha. Sadhu Deva Samantabha. About sadhu, I have explained several times. So sadhu sangha, we have to make association with persons who are spiritually interested and who are trying to culture Krishna consciousness, that association. So these six things, 
will elevate me to the path of Krishna consciousness and the other six formulas, they will go against me. So, jadrichala mm-hmm. avasantishta means that my principle should be how to excel, how to uh, become successful in Krishna consciousness mm-hmm. in this life. And so far other things are required for maintaining my body, I shall be satisfied whatever easily comes by the will of the Supreme Law, I should accept. I should not make much endeavor for artificial uh, fulfillment of our desires and senses. So, Jadrichala Avasantrasta, Dandatita. Dandatita means he should avoid quarreling. Because this world is full of, especially this age, uh, people are uh, seeking how to quarrel, you see. So we have to avoid quarrel, you see. Dandatita vimatsara, and we should not be envious. And sometimes we are uh, faced with persons who are envious to us, but we should not be envious. Uh, just like the best example is Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, his enemies who crucified him, they are envious of Jesus Christ, but Lord Jesus Christ was not envious to them. Uh, when he was being crucified, he prayed God, Oh Lord, they do not know what they are doing. Please excuse them. Just see how much, I mean, say, uh, noble he was. Vimasa, he was not envious to anyone, even to his enemy. Uh, so Krishna consciousness teaches us that they are not envious even to the enemies. The Bhimasara, Sama. Sama means equal to everyone. Siddha, Siddho, Asiddho. Now suppose that if we do not expect in Krishna consciousness, it does not matter. That's like Arjun. Arjun was fighting in Krishna consciousness, but his only beloved son, I mean to say Abhimanna, he was killed there. He was killed there. But because we are fighting, there may be uh, some, some, of, some party men, some of my party men, they must be killed. I cannot expect in fighting that I shall be simply victorious and the other party will be killed. No. So, uh, 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 that was a great shock to Krishna Arjo. He was the only son and he was sixteen years old and he had a young wife. Uh, and so just see, but he, he was uh, steady even at the death of his only son, Siddha Siddho, Chakritya Pina In this way, if we uh, make progress, Krishna consciousness, then we are free from any reaction of the world. This is the whole point.